So, we're here with a deer that I mounted about a week ago. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let it dry another week and then go ahead and do a uh, uh, first part of finish work is uh, putting uh, epoxy skull in any areas that might have pulled a little bit like in the eye we're going to scope the inner detail of the nostril inside the nose with the uh, epoxy scope give it that fleshy lifelike inside that nostril and uh, then we'll let that uh, sit for about 24 hours and then the next day go in and then do all the painting with an airbrush. We'll go in, we'll paint the eyes, the nose, inside, the lip line there, that bottom lip that shows there on a the white tail, the ears, and uh, as you can see there's only two pins in this mount during the whole drying process. One T-pin in the front corner of each eye. That's it. Nothing in the tear ducts. It depends on how you prep your form. As uh, far as making your uh, going in and making your uh, lip lines and dipping out inside the uh, tear duct areas for you, where you need to uh, tuck your skin okay the thinner the uh, the cut you make into the form that's going to allow that that spring action in that form because that's what that does you cut it here around the line of the lip you don't cut the foam out what you do you you, you make a slice up in there you're not taking any of the material of the foam out and then when you go ahead and tuck that skin in, that foam, when you bring that tucking tool back out, that foam will just, will, uh, it'll spring back, locking that skin in, along with the hide paste that you got. And to make it easier to tuck is how good you prep your hide, which is making sure your lips, your lip skin is thin, every, your nose, nostril skin is thin, your eye skin is thin and turned all the way and then I use the tucking method of my eyes I tuck the skin between the glass eye and the clay that I shaped and formed in there for my upper and lower eyelids uh, I don't use any other pins I don't want to punch a bunch of holes in my hide I mean there's no need for it if you got your your if you got your form prepped good, you get all that molding release off of there that uh, that they use to uh, when they make the molds at the supply company. They got a molding release on the forms, and that allows them to pull the mold off the form. So what you got to do, you got to come in. I use a a stout rougher, which is. I use a rough, rough like this. It's just a stick with a wire, real hard wire brush. Go across it, scratch that form real good, and you're getting that mold release off the form. Plus, you're you're making uh, nice grooves inside the form all over. And then when you press that hide paste on there, that's going to give that hide paste and grooves to get in there and bond to that form. And when that hide hits that glue it's going to stick right to that form there's no going to be no release from that form and that glue and that's what allows you to get all these uh, they call it drumming but some guys they'll, they'll shoot pins all over the place in that, in that deer hide I don't use staples on my ears I make sure I clean my ears real good I, uh, I make sure my ears are dry not dry, brittle dry but dry and still pliable that gives and I take my ear liners plastic ear liners I take it and rough it up with this too and that gives that high paste good uh, adhesion something to stick to and for the the outside of the ears I'll go ahead and put uh, I'll go ahead and put some uh, 
I use uh, paper clips to card my ears with some plastic, uh, thin plastic. It's it's actually these are sold to uh, fin to card fins on on fish. I use them on my deer too. They work great. They're pliable. You can move them around. But uh, and for the ears or for the uh, around the base, a lot of problems is that'll pull. Okay. First thing is get that all the way around the inside of that skin, all the way around thin. The thinner, the less shrinkage you're going to get. And I'll I'll uh, I'll redo all this, all the muscle around all the head, the ears, and everything with clay. And then I'll go ahead. I'll leave the clay right up to about here. Then I'll go ahead and take some epoxy scope and mix it with uh, some brown. What do you call it? I call it uh, chocolate brown paint. Mix it with that, coat it real good, mix it all up, and turn that that white uh, epoxy scope into a brown color. And then I'll take two parts, I'll, I'll break it in two, roll one part, and wrap it all the way around, tight up again this ear, this uh, antler burr. And put it around there on both sides. Then when I go to mount this thing, I'll bring that up, the skin up around this burr where I where it needs to be. I'll go ahead and sew it up, and then I'll go ahead and take my mounting tool and actually press that skin right up into up against the the bone itself. And what that does, it pinches that skin between the antler burr. And that epoxy scope. And that epoxy scope, once you dry, it's dry rock hard. And that will not, that'll help it from even coming out. As you can see, this has been a week and this has not even pulled whatsoever. So that's one trick I got. And, you know, I mean, you learn things as you go along, but I don't have, I didn't shoot a bunch of pins up in here like a target. Uh, this is all pin free. This whole face is pin free. And I'm getting all the detail in there that a natural whitetail has. I mean, you don't see a whitetail walking around the woods looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, some people like it. I mean, which, you know, that's fine. But me, I like to mount them up natural, the way they look when they're alive. But, uh, but what we're going to do... We're going to give this at least another week to dry and then uh, go ahead with the epoxy work. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do all that. And then uh, we'll go to the painting. Show you how to do the finish touch ups with the painting. So we'll see, we'll see when we get to that point. All right, we're back with this deer. We're gonna do the epoxy work, and uh, first I'm gonna seal the nose, any areas that we're gonna be applying paint and epoxy. We're gonna seal it with this uh, plunger dust aisle uh, sealer. It'll seal the skin. To where no moisture can get to it. I use water-based paint with my airbrush, so and the epoxy sculpt has moisture in it. And with this, it'll seal everything. Seal it to where no moisture can get to it from any of the paint or epoxy sculpt, and it won't rehydrate the skin at all. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start sealing this deer.
this stuff does is it'll absorb into the skin and seal it. So I seal it real good. Now we're going to do the nose pad. Get that sealed. paint this, this deer, it won't rehydrate with any moisture from my paint, so my epoxy work. And after the mound has been delivered and wherever the customer hangs it, this will help for any future uh, Rehydration from high humidity or or anything like that. And that's where you get cracking in the skin. Get that bottom lip. Seal this other eye. Like I said, you want to put this, apply this sealer anywhere you're going to do epoxy work or a paint is going to be applied to. I try not to get any on the glass eye. If you do, it ain't gonna hurt it. Because once you're done painting, you're gonna go over with that eye and clean it. You're gonna clean all the paint off of it anyway. I use a uh, lacquer thinner. I use lacquer thinner to clean the paint, any residue left on the eye. Uh, it ain't gonna hurt none if you happen to get some on there. So make sure I get a good amount up in the tear duct area. Get up on the upper eyelid area. Want to get some up into the nostril where that lip skin is tucked in there. So you're going to be putting a poxy scope in there also. You don't want that any of that skin into the nostril area to rehydrate, crack. So. 
get some up in there. doing some painting inside the ear too. So you want to get some, some sealer up in there. You want to get that all nice and sealed in there. So none of that skin rehydrates and uh, pulls away from your ear liner. And then you'll have loose crackly skin in there after it dries. And it'll drum away from the uh, away from the ear liner. So I like to get that up in there. I learned the sealing technique. I learned that from watching Rick Carter's A to Z whitetail mounting. And uh, great video to uh, watch. For a beginner, I mean it. Uh, it goes over everything. On that. Uh, so I went ahead and sealed everything. All I got to do is seal the other side nostril, and go ahead and and do the sealing inside the uh, other ear. And then after that, we'll be ready to, uh, we'll let this, let set this, let it, let that sealer set and sink in and dry for about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll be able to apply all my, uh, all the epoxy work. Alright, <clears throat> what I did, I took two parts, equal parts of A and B epoxy scope, smashed them together. Okay. I'm going to make like a little pocket, squeezing both ends, leaving a pocket. Okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to color this. This would be for around my eyes. I'm going to take uh, York Nose Pad Gray. And I'm going to squirt some of this paint inside that pocket of the epoxy scope. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. What I'm doing is I'm coloring this uh, natural epoxy scope. It has no color. So, what I'm, why I'm doing, because I'm doing this is because uh, when I go to paint that eye, I won't have to put a thick layer of uh, paint anywhere on, to cover up this epoxy scope. It'll blend in with a light mist of paint when I paint that eye. I mean, you can mix any color paint that you want and mix it with this uh, epoxy scope and turn that epoxy scope into that color you uh, desire. So, and I also learned this watching that. Rick Carter's A to Z uh, mounting a white-tailed deer. So, I mean, I'm not going to be able to tell you everything I learned from uh, his video. I've watched a lot of videos, but he was his video was the most information informative video that I've watched. I learned, I learned so much on that. There's so many things I just I can't mention everything. You know, it's, it's a great video to get. You can order that out of uh, uh, 
Wasco catalog, which I think Mackenzie owns them now. And what I do is I just keep doing the same process until I get that color that I want. Keep mixing it. And I think this is uh, going to be what I want right here. Plus, this mix up, mix the epoxy scuff up real good together. There you go. That's what I'll use to uh, fill in any little voids and gaps where that skin pulled during the drying process away from the glass eye in which I'm not going to have to fill too much. I'll use some of this. I'll use this on both eyes and I'll use some of it on the lower lip to build up a little bit of that shrinkage on that lower lip. Alright, what I'll do is I kind of roll out a little worm and then I'll place this right on the lower lid edge. Once you get it on there, you can go ahead and work it with your tool. Then you go ahead and scrape off excess. Got plenty of time to work with this this stuff. to keep my eye clean. I want to do a I don't want to do a sloppy job on it. I'll spray a little bit of water on my modeling tool and that'll kind of help spread that epoxy around. A good bit line there. Wipe off any excess. that eye clean in any possible way. And I'll go ahead get 
me a piece prepared for the upper eyelid area. Try not to, to uh, trap any of the uh, eyelashes on it. This is a little tedious to work with. Maybe take some excess to put inside the uh, cronkular crease. Put a little bit up in the ocular here. Take that, that brush, the 
and soak it in some lacquer there. I'm going to go ahead and smooth all that out. in there and smooth it out. Okay, that's one eye. Okay, we're going to rebuild that bottom lip here. Big, big fat lip sticking out there, so I'm just gonna kind of fill in those gaps.
some refining on it. up in there to what we'll do back over Get that cleaned out of there. And that's it for the uh, bottom lip. Now we'll do the uh, inner nostril detail next. Alright, we mixed up two more equal parts of natural epoxy. No color. I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out so I can make myself a pocket for the paint. And I'm going to use on this one flesh. Flesh color. Go ahead and mix that paint up. I want to turn this epoxy into a flesh color. Mix it up a little bit. Make another pocket. Put some, add some more paint. I got the cup there to catch excess drips. I'll get it all over the countertop. Just keep adding, doing the same process until you get that color that you want. It'll take a little bit, a few times of doing this to uh, establish the color. It's already starting to turn fleshy. I buy all my epoxy sculpt natural color so that I can go ahead and paint any any color that I need for whatever specimen I'm doing. I mean, you can buy them already pre-colored, different, all different colors. But I prefer to just mix my own. See how it's starting to turn there? One more time, I ought to do it. Just ought to do it. And this, I'll put a little dab of this in the tear duct, down in there deep. 
and I use it to re-sculpt the inner nostril detail. That way I don't have to do any painting inside there. I just do a little outline on the outside area with a little bit of York gray pad uh, gray. Take our brush with some lacquer thinner, get in there and smooth that epoxy scope out. Back there is how I 
finished with the epoxy, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side the same way. And uh, we'll get back to you and I'll uh, explain what the next process will be. Well, first I'm going to do a little dab in the tear duct there, show you how to do that. Alright, now we're going to put a little dab into the tear duct. I'll fill that up in there. Get it in there the way we want it, then just go over it with some lacquer thinner and a brush and smooth it out. And with that, uh, that'll be it with the epoxy scope. And we're going to do the other side exactly the same, and then uh, we'll be ready for painting tomorrow. Alright, all our epoxy work is uh, complete on this deer head. So, uh, We'll give it till tomorrow. We'll be back. I'll do all the airbrushing and finish it up. Call the customer, have him come and pick it up. And uh, we'll
we'll get back with you tomorrow on this gear and you'll be able to see how I finish a white-tailed deer shoulder mount with an airbrush.